All right, this is an important story I want to talk about, about, about Klobuchar. And Amy Klobuchar, you know, mostly, may, I'm tempted to replay the joke video we played the other week. She's been kind of just like this funny sort of like bizarre distraction for most of the thing. Because she's got this kind of weird thing where it's like, on one hand, she's, you know, I mean, you know, hey, not like, hey, I've, I'm abusive to my staff. I apologize and I've learned. But like, this will teach me how to do good with Putin. Uh, you know, and the and the very, and this, this weird juxtaposition of somebody who I've at times found her kind of likable, but she's, you know, she's odd. And then this massive mainstream media assertion against all available, just like, experience of watching her you know it's sort of like uh you know somebody who's like a say like ranked 50 in the uh world tennis pro rankings and you know look that's a fine player that that's the 50 best best human being in the planet of tennis and as if the entire tennis press just said this person is going to win the u.s open they are amazing they're incredible right and you're just watching it and you're like i, I guess i mean they know how to hit the ball but no um, so it's been that kind of funny. And then of course, her whole campaign is just, you know, don't expect shit, eat shit. And, you know, the, the opposite of inspired in every conceivable possible way. Uh, and, you know, look, it's functionally, it's great. She's in right now because she's eating from Biden and Warren and that helps. However, if it became ever serious and I don't think it will, but it's already serious enough. And I wouldn't be surprised if Frankly, I mean, I'm sure this story probably does come from somebody in the Biden orbit. That would be my guess. But this is horrifying. Uh, basically, Amy Klobuchar, in addition, you know, you know, corporate, uninspired, whatever, senator. But I think, but there's another dynamic here with her background as a DA. Uh, I'm sure, she's done some good work, which she brags about, but there's also the nature of that job, frankly, unless you're somebody who's really crusading to change. And this new report that came out on the Hill, the Min Minneapolis NAACP and Black Lives Matter have called on Amy Klobuchar to suspend her campaign. Scroll down. Senator Amy Klobuchar is being called upon to suspend her presidential campaign after an associate press story published Tuesday offered in a critical account of her handling a case of while she was a Hennepin County District Attorney. Is Hennepin. that right? Hennepin? At... As County DA, Klobuchar led a case against Myron Burrell, who was a teenager at the time. He was sentenced to life in prison in 2002. This is, I should say, a trigger. It was a very disturbing story for the murder of 11-year-old Taisha Edwards. The AP revealed that Klobuchar prosecuted Burrell, now 33, despite there being little evidence. And even though his co-defendant confessed to the crime and said Burrell wasn't there. Though Klobuchar was not the country's top prosecutor, the second time was not the county's top prosecutor. The second time Burrell was convicted after flying, filing an appeal, she reportedly denied his request to attend his mother's funeral, claiming he was a threat to society. And it goes on to talk about how she's touted her tough on crime uh, stance. Uh, let me just quote, let's scroll down. I just want to quote from the head of the NAACP. What people need to understand that this isn't about partisanship. This isn't about politics, said Leslie Redmond, a president of Minneapolis, Minneapolis NAACP, said in a press conference. This is about justice. This isn't just a situation that happened to the Central Park Five alone. This is a situation that happens all around America. And this is a situation that happens right here in Minneapolis, in Minnesota. So you have organizations that work on racism, that work on the criminal justice system and the structural racism innate in those institutions, highlighting a story and providing documentation to an extensively documented AP story that shows that Amy Klobuchar zealously prosecuted a kid for a, hor a horrific, horrifying crime of which there was a massive amount of exculpatory evidence, including a co-defendant who confessed to the crime and said he wasn't there. So, you know, I recommend everybody read the AP story, make up their own minds. We know things like this happen a lot. I mean, everybody remembers the, you know, picking over Kamala Harris's record. Uh, and 
A lot of innocent people in jail. There's a lot of people who are over. There's a lot of people who are in the crosshairs of policing to begin with because of their race or their class. Then there's a massive amount of people that are incarcerated for things they shouldn't be incarcerated for or massively, you know, disproportionately punished. And there's also a lot of people that are innocent. I mean, it's a, over a decade ago, look at the state of Illinois. The Republican governor at that time abolished the death penalty in that state because too many people were getting cleared by DNA evidence. This guy was like, I can't do this anymore. The boy's mother uh, died. Uh, she was driving three hours back and forth to visit him in prison, and she died in a car crash. And he and he couldn't go because Amy Klobuchar denied that. And that, and I have to say, just really like in general, even if you're talking about somebody who actually did commit some a crime as heinous as that crime, what does that mean? I mean, really, you can't you can't have somebody. You know, even if you want to do the whole thing, have somebody shackled, go with police. They can't attend their mother's funeral. They're a threat to society. What are they? What are they up in a Marvel movie? The Joker. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's it's cruel. It's vindictive. It's nonsense. And so I, I think that it's important. You know, she's the one who does the umbrella jokes and all of that. And, you know, you know, again, if you look at what she's actually saying and her policies, it's you know, it's despicable. But this. I think, you know, adds something to this isn't just sort of some bizarre sideshow as it's been that the media is trying to make happen. And, you know, kudos again for the New York Times who embarrassed themselves in every way, shape and form with their endorsement issue. And I doubt they even knew this story. They, they could figure out a way to grill people for an hour and a half, you know, and of course, and, 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 and can, you know, say, oh, Bernie Sanders, you want to activate de American democracy. Isn't that like Trump? And they can't even give a cursory gla a glance over somebody's DA record that they're going to do a, you know, embarrassing split endorsement of. It's disgusting. Embarrassing. You're calling from a 917 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Nine one seven. Are you there? Nine one seven. All right, I guess nine one seven is not here. Sorry, nine one seven. See, you'll take. You're calling from a eight one two area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Hi, uh, I'm Charmhole calling from Indiana. What's your name again? A uh, Charmhole. Charmhole. Yeah, two words or one. It's like chair, you know. Anyway, okay. uh, I have a question and a comment. Who do you think is going to be Bernie Sanders VP? Yes. And Nina Turner for vice president. I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I love it. I mean, I, the only person, honestly, I because I, I'm I'm not in. Bernie Sanders needs to pick somebody. Who is an who is in at least some significant ideological accordance? Frankly, um, I think Rashida might be old enough, so I would I would vet Rashida Talib. And then if you want somebody, the only person that I could think of that bridges the divide with being a having close relationships with the Democratic Party elite and establishment, but with a seriously good record and clear strong courage. Uh, that would be Barbara Lee. So Barbara Lee's on my list. Nina, Nina Turner. Isn't she from uh, the, sorry, she's Midwest, right? No, or? Barbara Lee's from California. She's from Oakland. Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, West Coast. But I don't. Wait, what I happened don't, to Stacey Abrams, though? Is she off the table? Yeah, Stacey Abrams would be off the table for me. Yes. I would. I, 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 I think yeah, I heard there was the, like a the, whole bunch of complications. I think with the, the stuff with voting, voting, like, the stuff yeah. with Bloomberg and, and, uh, and I, I, I'm not. Uh, look, mm. I, Amy, uh, Stacey Abrams brings a lot to the table. I think the way she handled and how she ran for governor in Georgia, there's, you know, a lot there. But I, to me, she has way Hopefully too much. Hopefully she can get on his cabinet, right? She has like, too I much think, affinity and closeness to the, the corporate wing of the Democratic Party for me. Charm Hole, mm. <laughs> I appreciate your call. Thank you. What were you going to say, Matt? I mean, I mean, I'd like to see her, you know, win a 
uh, statewide race in Georgia. Right. Take over some. Take over the governorship next time or something. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I would tend to agree with that. So.